Hey guys, so I thought that I would try and paint John Singer Sargent's Lady Agnew, as I've always admired his work and I really want to learn how he paints. And of course, one of the best ways you can learn is by doing studies of the artist's work. A kind of reverse engineering process to break down how the artist handles color, composition, values, and treatment of edges, which are some of the things that I'll cover in this video. So this study was painted in the Procreate app on my iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. And I also used my own brushes, which you can find in the link in the description below on Gumroad. So um, firstly, I always like to darken the background a bit to a light mid-tone because it becomes a lot easier to judge your values when you're starting from the middle of the value spectrum. Then I do my sketch with my sketch brush on a new layer and rough in the shapes and just make sure the gesture of the pose is accurate enough to the original painting. It's interesting to note that at the time when Lady Agnew was sitting for Sargent, she was actually recovering from an illness, so she was quite tired and just sat down in the chair without much posing. So Sargent just captured her as she was in the natural pose. And when I saw the painting, I got the impression that Lady Agnew had a lot of vitality and mischief as reflected in her gaze and smile, so I was quite surprised when I learned this fact about the painting process. So when I'm happy with the overlook of the sketch, I lighten the opacity of the sketch layer and I use my Wonder Round brush on a low opacity to just brush in the underpainting colour. And my underpainting colour is often a blue or purple because it's the cool complementary of the orangeness of the skin. So laying down those foundation colours first makes the skin appear more lifelike when you apply the lighter tints on top. And I try to emulate the way Sargent did the brush strokes for the highlights um, because the treatment of the sharper edges really brings the focus to the eyes and the nose. And as I start to work on the smaller strokes of the painting, I use my smooth blend brush. And this is what I have used for most parts of the painting. And he has left out pretty much most of the finer details in the hair, only suggesting the volume of the black hair with some very light gradation of the value near the hairline. So at this stage, I just left the hairline soft and blending with the skin. And in terms of the composition, you can see that the figure is placed in the center of the canvas, uh, but I really like how Sargent has her sitting at an angle in the chair, so the asymmetry of the chair makes it a much more interesting composition. So right now I'm just laying down some uh, colors of the background and the chair and uh, the drapery so that I've got some values to uh, compare and contrast to when I am painting the figure. So 
So I would say that the thing that makes John Singer Sargent's painting so successful and look so fresh、um, was the way that he lays down his bold and economical brushstrokes. He makes sure that he has plenty of paint in his brushes, and he will lay down the big strokes, work in the midtones, and model in the large planes. Then, once he was satisfied with the midtones, he would gradually work into the darker and lighter accents, and he would be able to do it in very confident strokes, because before doing the painting, he would have already made many many sketches、um, studying his subject, so he knows exactly where to place those accents. With a lot of freshness and precision, and those sharp contrasts of the hard edges against the soft edges really makes the painting pop and come to life. So I guess、uh, the thing that I found most difficult in this painting was、um, trying to paint the dress.、Um, I found it difficult in comparison with the face because、uh, the dress、uh, has already been quite abstracted and well refined in the eyes of Sargent. So trying to reproduce that abstraction with the fresh precision felt really unnatural when I was just simply copying a photo of a painting. And in terms of the colors of the dress, I experimented a bit more with a purple undertone. So、um, I think I just really like that harmony of purple, pinks, and grays and whites together. Painting the bracelet, you can see that、um, Sargent has actually just done some very simple strokes in the midtone and then added on some dashes of highlights on top, really just to give a suggestion of jewelry rather than painting it in very fine details. Here I'm trying to、uh, paint the necklace, and as I was painting the chain, I thought that Sargent has really captured that lightness and that、uh, feeling of the chain just really just resting there on her skin, and it's also、uh, reflecting off、uh, the light. So it's quite amazing what he could do with just a thin line. Filling in the details of the chair,、um, getting a very very impressionistic sort of、uh, style, as I was trying to recreate those strokes, and I imagine the chair must have had some kind of intricate floral pattern. But Sargent has just simply made it very loose brush strokes, just to give the suggestion of flowers and plants.
So now I'm just adding in some dark and light accents in the chair and just making sure the fabric from the upholstery of the chair uh, contains some colors that's reflected from the dress. So now I'm painting in the backdrop, so getting in the um, overall values the shadows and highlights and also uh, of course the the color that is reflected onto that dark blue backdrop from the dress and the chair So one of the things that Sargent has taught to his students was that you should always paint one thing into another and not side by side until they touch. And this was actually something that I learned after I had completed the study. So now that looking back at his painting, I can really see um, examples of that, like such as in the neck area, you can just sort of see the neck is blending pretty much into the back of the chair and also where the sleeve is that sort of semi-transparent fabric is pretty much just blended into that blue backdrop there so the tonal values are very much the same so this is why the figure looks so much like she actually belongs in her surroundings. So you can see that Sargent has really thought about uh, all the value groupings in the entire composition rather than just thinking about individual elements and trying to make them fit together. So that's definitely one of the major lessons that I've learned from doing the study. Um, model the metong first and allow your objects and backgrounds to blend into each other to make those soft and lost and found edges which really gives it that poetic quality in his painting and so you can see that the hair outline just sort of recedes into the background with the soft edges so overall doing the study has really opened my eyes to the thinking process behind uh, Sargent's painting so I know that it's quite different when you're doing a digital painting compared with a traditional painting in oils. But there is still a lot that I can bring back into my own digital art. And that is to make sure that all the tonal values are accurate and true to life. Um, there is a lot of subtlety in the tone gradation in his work that really brings his subject to life. His careful planning sketches prior to the painting session sets the foundation for the success of his art, as it allows him to masterly place strokes confidently and economically to bring out the flair in his subjects. So I hope you have learned some things from this video that you can take away and develop in your own paintings. If you're interested in my brushes, check out the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm hoping to do more master studies and document my learnings into a series. So stay tuned and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!